In our previous video, we saw how to upload a file in a .NET c -sharp website. In this video, we're going to see how to validate an XML file. So let's take a look. I'm going to jump right into Visual Studio. And remember, we left off on this uh, validate button click. So in the validate button click, I'm going to have it. Uh, I don't want to put too much in a, in a button handler because the logic that I have in that button handler might want to be called from elsewhere. So I'm just going to have it invoke a method called validate XML. And uh, let's see, we'll do file name. We'll pass in a file name. Now, where'd that file name come from? You might remember we declared it in our last video. Uh, up here is an attribute of the class, and we assign it once we have made sure we have a, a file with a valid extension. So let's just do a couple of checks. Let's say if, if file name, whoops, does not equal null, and file name dot length greater than zero. Make sure we have a valid file. If so, let's call this new method validate XML. Uh, just a moment, my curlies are a little bit out of balance here, so let me fix that. There we go. Okay, so we're going to call a new method called validate XML. Now we get a little light bulb here. It says there's no method that exists. Do you want to generate it? Yeah, I sure do. So there we go. There's our new method validate XML. Okay. In this method, we need to do a few things. First of all, we need something that will read an XML file. And so this is going to be called an XML reader, which is a class built into Visual Studio.net. So you don't have to go and grab a library or anything like that. Let's call it XML reader. Uh, we'll declare it on one line. Uh, just one moment. Did I spell that correctly? XML reader. Uh, we'll do system XML, XML reader. That'll work. Okay. Uh, so now what I'm going to say is I need to define the settings that I use while reading the XML file. So for this, we need something called XML reader settings. And we'll just call that settings equals new XML reader settings. Now, why do we need this? We need to tell it how to do things like parse the XML file. Uh, once again, we get a light bulb here. Uh, so we'll say using system.xml. As a matter of fact, this will clean up our import up above. We can just refer to it uh, like so. So uh, settings, I'll walk through each of these as I'm, as I'm setting them. So validation type equals validation type dot schema. What does that mean? Remember, there are several ways that we can parse XML. Uh, or sorry, several ways we can set validation rules for XML. We have well-formed DTD and XSD. What we're saying in this case is that we want to uh, validate against an XSD, which is good because that's what we have, an XSD. Now I'm going to say settings.validation flags. Now this one gets a little funky because we have to use a unary operator, uh, kind of like an append. So I say settings validation flags then XML schema uh, validation flags dot process schema location. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're saying we know that we're validating with XSD. Now we want to find the schema that we associate with this XML file. The way we put together our XML file, uh, we have the schema indicated right at the top of the file. So we're simply saying go and find that schema. Okay, settings dot validation flags. Okay, uh, and then once again, that unary operator, which is the pipe on an American keyboard, that's often the character that's above the enter key, uh, but that's not consistent on international keyboards. So forgive me uh, if I don't know your keyboard, but it's just a, a straight up and down pipe. Okay, so settings validation flags. Once again, XML schema uh, validation flags. And this time we're going to say report validation warnings. That one's pretty straightforward. If we have a warning, let's be aware of it. Okay, one more that we need is settings dot validation event handler. Okay, plus equals, uh, we'll say new validation event handler. Okay, this 
dot validation event handle. Okay, this one's a little bit tricky. What this one says is, if something goes wrong, who do I tell? And in this case, we're saying that we are going to have an inner class called validation event handle, or uh, rather actually a method called validation event handle. Now, I don't like red lines in code. Let's go ahead and set up that method now so we can get rid of the red line. So I say private void validation event handle, and then I say object sender. Okay, validation event args, args. Now, how do I know that I need those two arguments? Well, that's just a little bit of magic. That's what this validation event handler is looking for. It's looking for a signature that has these, uh, there we go. It's looking for a method that has these two parameters passed into it. So sender and validation event args args. Um, we're not actually going to use either of those in this case. We just know if we are here, it's because something is wrong with our XML. So this method will only be called if there's something wrong with our XML. So let's say console.writeLine and we'll say, uh, let's see, we're going to go with R N T, a couple of escape characters, and then validation error. Now I said we weren't going to use those arguments and I've lied, args uh, dot message. So that tells us what's wrong. So we write that out to the console. Now let's go to our LBL status. Remember that guy that we made earlier? Text, so we can communicate to the user. And I'm going to say the same thing. Uh, I'll, we will say validation failed message. Okay, plus args dot message. Okay, I have one more thing I'm going to want to do, which is throw an exception. But we'll leave that for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. I only want to cover that when it actually makes sense, which it will in just a few moments. Okay, so we have our settings. We have our reader. Now we need to marry the two together. I'm going to say XML reader, which is the variable defined on line 63. XML reader uh, equals XML reader Pay close attention to the capitalization, the difference between the variable with a lowercase x and the type with an uppercase x. So XML reader dot create. Now here's where it gets important. We have to pass in the file name and we also have to pass in the settings that we're using to validate this file. So there we go. Uh, validate the file with the given settings. Now what we need to do is we need a while loop. Okay iterate over the XML. We need a while loop that's going to look a little bit tricky right now, but uh, we're just reading the file. We're not doing anything with the file, but validating it. So we need to read it one line at a time. So I say while XML reader dot read, and it's going to continue to iterate over this as long as there is stuff to read. Uh, open and close paren, which means do nothing. We might come back later and add some more stuff to this, but at the moment, all we want to do is read and validate the file one line at a time, and that's what's going on here. Now, here's where that exception thing comes in, where I said I'm going to come back to the exception in a moment. If everything goes okay, we go to line 77, which is where I say LBL status dot text equals validation passed. But what if something goes wrong? Now that's a little bit tricky. If something goes wrong, on line number 71, we told it to go down and invoke this method called validation event handle down here. So it calls that method, and then it's just going to return, and it's going to call the next line and call the next line. Well, what if we want to say, no, don't do that. As soon as the validation has failed, don't continue and process the other lines. Well, that's a good place for an exception. If we throw an exception back to the calling method, then it will not keep processing. And we can handle that exception and decide what to do. So I'm going to say throw new exception. And an exception just means something went wrong. So I can go ahead and reuse the same text that I've used in the status label and just say, hey, something went wrong. Okay, now let's go back up to the top and decide how we're going to handle this. Uh, I need to put a try and then an open curly, and then a close curly and a catch. 
and I need that to surround whatever might throw an exception. So I'll start with the try up here on line 63. Why not line 61? Why not above XML reader? Well, as you can guess, we'll get to that in just a moment. So I start the try and then I uh, do the catch strategically right after we update the status. For the catch, I have to say what exception I'm, catch I'm catching. I'll just say general exception EX. And then within that general exception EX, I'll say LBL status dot text equals error. I will put it in quotes, error validating. Uh, and then we'll say plus EX dot message. Once again, we don't like to show an exception directly to the user most of the time. We don't want to give a hacker any ammunition. Uh, and additionally, we don't want to overwhelm a user who might be confused uh, or who you just doesn't need to know what the exception details are. So I wouldn't typically do that, but here in a debugging scenario, we'll go ahead and do it. Okay, one other thing. So what's going to happen is we have this try block. If an exception is thrown, Processing stops in the try block and it jumps down to catch, which means if we have a validation error here, it's going to jump straight to catch and it's going to skip this line right here. So you see the placement of the catch is very much intentional. We want to make sure that we only get to line 78 if all occurrences of line 77 were successful. If there was a failure while reading the file, then we jump to the catch and we update the status that we have right here. Okay, one more thing I like about the try catch block is the ability to do a finally. A finally means this block will execute regardless of whether or not there was an exception. This is an excellent time to close resources because we know whether there was an exception or if there was not an exception, we're still going to end in this finally block. So I'll say if XML reader is not equal to null, then we need to say XML reader Dot close. So don't forget to do this part. Don't forget to close the reader. And now hopefully it makes a bit more sense why I declared the reader up here on line 63 where it has scope all the way through the end of the method. Okay, real quick, what doesn't it like here? XML reader. Uh, okay, I need to initialize it to null just so I can put something in there. There we go. And we save. And so let's, I'm going to set, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll run without a breakpoint at first. Let's go ahead and see if we are able to validate our file. Just one moment. Now, when we look at this file, it does have an invalid element called foo. The element foo does not exist in our XSD. And by the way, one other note, I already did upload the XSD into my project. I can show you that in just a bit. But uh, let's go ahead and say choose file. Let's grab our grab our plants XML. I'm expecting this to fail. So I choose validate, give it a moment to repost, and sure enough, validation failed message. The element plant has an invalid child element foo. List of possible elements expected, genus. So you see here that sure enough, uh, it was able to take this XSD, the set of rules, it notices that the plant type has a child genus, species, cultivar, common name, but it does not see foo there. So sure enough, it failed on foo, and it also told us what it was expecting. So let me take out that invalid uh, thing, save, and let's try one more time. We'll grab plants again, and then we'll choose validate, fingers crossed, and you see this time, sure enough, validation passed. So that's a quick look at how to validate in our, uh, and we note that it, it notes that it got a new file. That's a quick look at how to validate in csharp.net. Uh, I, I realize I didn't go over each of, well, I, I would, well, I did go over the lines, but I would really like to debug through them. Uh, so I'll tell you what, in the very next video, we'll slow down a little bit, we'll debug, and we'll see what's happening line by line. We'll also take a deeper look at exactly how that exception works and how it verified that we got the failed message instead of the validation passed message when validation did not pass. So we'll go over that in the next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.